Hello YouTube, this is Mahadeva the Thunder Wizard and today begins the day called Naga Panchami, which is a very powerful day in Vedic Hinduism where we acknowledge the power of the Nagas. Nagas are well, depending on uh, how you look at it, um, at the very least, Nagas are spiritual forces associated with very powerful spiritual energies. Naga is literally the same word we have in English, snake, nag, and it means the same thing. It means a serpent. Uh, according to some people who have uh, shared with me their knowledge of their traditional culture. Nagas are spiritual beings, extraterrestrial beings of light who came to earth many, 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 many years ago and taught human beings spiritual practices associated with the rising of Kundalini. So perhaps they may be responsible for us even knowing about the chakras, knowing about Kundalini and um, many of the techniques, if not all of the techniques we have of raising the Kundalini may very well have come from extraterrestrial snake beings. They are said to in their, uh, in their natural form, they, they are said to be serpents, but they have the ability to shapeshift into humans. And they came to earth and lived on earth as respected spiritual teachers, as powerful spiritual beings. But what ended up happening is that uh, human beings who were jealous and were frightened of the power that these beings had, they gathered together and they started a war and drove the Nagas off of planet Earth. But uh, thankfully, um, their knowledge and their practices have survived. So today is Naga Panchami, which is a day where people do all kinds of different rituals to give honor to these powerful spiritual beings we call Nagas. And uh, some of them uh, have to do with rituals where you give offerings to snakes or give offerings to um, some kind of uh, representation of a snake. Um, but there are also some very powerful mantras you can do. So I'm going to share with you two powerful mantras for the nodes of the moon because the nodes of the moon, the north node and the south node of the moon, in Vedic astrology are actually the head and the tail of a Naga, of a snake. And these nodes have to do with uh, our karmic destiny. So the first, the north node of the moon is called Rahu and Rahu represents all of the ambition that your soul has to come into this world. And so it literally is the driving force that pushed your soul to make the determination, you chose to do it, make the determination to become human in this lifetime. It is Rahu that gave you that and it is your, um, your aspirations, your strong desires. Now, unfortunately, uh, the lesson that Rahu brings is that Rahu also stimulates all of your uh, addictions, all of your obsessions, all of the things that drive you uh, in an ego-centered way. And so it creates more karma if you are not spiritually centered. If you are spiritually centered, then Rahu shows you, peels back the veil between the worlds and shows you how 
human desires actually uh, fuel your drive in life and shows you all the secrets uh, and will uh, test you. So Rahu is a Naga that will test you to see that you are spiritual. If you are focused on your selfishness, your fear, your anger, your rage, your greed, your insecurity, then Rahu will deceive you in the attempt to make you become conscious of how painful it is to forget your spiritual essence. And so the idea is if you are spiritually centered and Rahu tempts you and you say, no, I don't want to do that. I want to follow my soul. Then Rahu says, good for you. You passed the test. Here is the truth of the universe. And so just like in the biblical narrative here, the serpent says, uh, you can have the knowledge of God, that you are God. South note of the mood is, is Ketu, and Ketu is the tail of the snake. Ketu doesn't have a head. So Ketu represents things like shamanism. Shamanism, as opposed to being a spiritual teacher where you have all this intellectual knowledge and awareness and wisdom, uh, Ketu is the body of the snake, which means when you physically are able to connect to different spiritual forces as a shaman, you can channel these energies. You may not necessarily have any conscious awareness of what it is or why it is, but you can, uh, you can channel these energies. This is one of the powers of Ketu, the body of the serpent. So Ketu, uh, unlike Rahu, represents those karmic things that take you out of this life. So when you have achieved your purpose in your physical incarnation, K2 says it's time for us to go back to the spirit. And so K2 takes you out of this world. Wherever Rahu is placed in your chart, this will represent things that have driven you to become um, enmeshed in three-dimensional physical reality. And wherever Rahu is placed in your chart, this will represent energies that are pulling you out of physical reality. Now, both Rahu and Ketu are considered to be malefic. Most people, when they encounter a snake, they are afraid. Most people look at snakes as being negative, harmful creatures. And in fact, they do have, many snakes do have poison in their, uh, in their bite. So um, this represents when we are operating from our human-based fears and we are trapped in physical um, three-dimensional reality, we experience the wisdom of the Nagas as a threat to our physical existence because in reality, this knowledge that they give is designed to help us to transform beyond three-dimensional reality. So if we are not in a spiritual state, we become frightened and we seek to attack and destroy snakes. So um, what we do on Naga Panchami is we acknowledge that we are not just physical beings. We are spiritual beings and we see the power of the Nagas which are aiding us in our spiritual evolution. But we must be willing to die. We must be willing to die to the... Uh, to the limiting parts of us, our animal nature, that um, are working against our ability to move beyond the physical into the spiritual. So, on Naga Panchami, um, if you don't have a snake to give offerings to, or if you don't um, have the knowledge or ability to do uh, some kind of a ritual to uh, a snake representation, there are some very easy things you can do. You can chant to uh, both Rahu and Ketu, the body of the snake and the head of the snake. So there's a great mantra for Rahu, which has to do with Shiva. Now, Shiva is known as Nageshwara. 
and you can hear the word Naga in there. And Nageshwara means the Lord of the Nagas. Whenever you see pictures of Shiva, many times you will see a snake wrapped around his wrists or wrapped around his neck. And this has to do with his power of mastering his spiritual force, his Kundalini, which allows him to move beyond physical limitation while still uh, retaining all of his human aspects. And therefore, he is the Lord of the serpent power within him, the Kundalini. He is Nageshwara. And so this will help you to uh, see through the tests of Rahu. When Rahu tests you to see your spiritual connection and when he seeks to deceive you associated with your temptations towards those things that keep you trapped, Lord Shiva will help you to master this power within you. Kundalini is, is associated with uh, higher spiritual states, but Kundalini is also associated with uh, going insane. There's a thing called Kundalini psychosis, where uh, when Kundalini is massively stimulated within the person, the person can actually become deceived. They can believe that they are God, or they can believe that they're being attacked by demons. And what this is, is Kundalini is just releasing what's already inside of you which is what Rahu does. Rahu will tempt you, test you with the things that are already inside of you. So Shiva, the master of meditation, is able to see and experience all of the things that come out of his human essence without being deceived. So by chanting to Shiva the Nageshwara, we gain power over our own uh, self deception, and we also gain the true knowledge of the serpent who has come to this world to give human beings the knowledge of their divinity, just like in the Garden of Eden. Did, did God say that you shouldn't eat this? If you eat this, you will become like God, knowing the nature of yourself. So that mantra, which I've put in the description, is simply... Om Namah Shivaya Namo Nageshwaraya. So you can chant that 108 times. Om Namah Shivaya Namo Nageshwaraya. Has a little bit of a tune to it if you want to do it uh, that way. Om Namah Shivaya Namo Nageshwaraya. So again, I will leave that in the description. You can chant that. Chant that 108 times if you want. If you want to do a ritual and light some candles and some incense, and if you have a representation of a snake, you can put that in front of you and you can chant Om Namah Shivaya Namo Nageshwaraya. Now, in terms of Ketu, uh, Ketu is represented by, um, among others, Ganesha. Many people don't realize this. Ganesha, as you know, is a boy. He's a, a boy's body with the head of a baby elephant. And um, so that represents the headlessness of Ketu. And there's a, whole, um, there's a whole mythological story about how Ganesha ended up with an elephant's head. Um, we won't get into that, but you do have the head has been cut off of the boy's body representing the earth. And then you have the wisdom of Shiva, which is represented with the head of the elephant, which is put on the boy's body. And so this represents the ability for us to face our own death. Because Ganesha actually was a boy who was killed by Shiva uh, and lost his head, and then Shiva resurrected him with a new head that had um, more balanced spiritual awareness. And this is the benefit of the power of Ganesha. Ganesha helps you go through the death of your connection to the things that Rahu makes you obsessed about 
Ganesha gives you the ability to die to those things and give you a new beginning. So many people worship Ganesha, seeing him as a, a deity of good luck. Whenever you start a business, whenever you have a marriage, whenever you do something brand new, you worship Ganesha, the, the being who uh, has everything to do with beginnings and destroying obstacles. But there's a hidden meaning under that, and that's okay. People don't realize it because if you realize you are worshiping the god of death who is seeking to destroy your physical connection to the world, you would think, well, that's the exact opposite of what I want to do. I want to start a business. My, I, want to, I want him to bless my marriage, a beginning of something. But really what's happening is you're saying, here's my desire for expression in this physical world. I want a new business. I want more success. I, I want my marriage to be blessed. And instead of focusing on dying to your, your selfish uh, enmeshment in 3D, you are saying, I am a physical being. I live in three, the three-dimensional world, but I would like for my path in this world to be focused on my spiritual liberation. So may the power of Ganesha, the power of Ketu, come into my marriage and help me stay focused on spirituality. May my Kundalini rise and may my physical walk through this life be connected to higher spiritual goals. May my business that I'm starting, may it give blessings to others. May I get blessings in my physical, spiritual, financial life as a direct result of what I do to help move along people on their spiritual path in life. And so Ketu wants to destroy everything associated with the illusion of physical reality. So if you make a deal with him and you say, I'm physically human, I have to do things like have a business, make money, get married, have children, eat food. I have to do these things, but I will give to you this focus, Ganesha, K2. I will give this to you and I seek to focus only on how I can spiritually empower myself and others. I want spirituality to be the focus of my physical life. And in that case, Ketu will bless you. When you realize that this is an illusion and you are working through this illusion to get closer to your spiritual center, then Ketu says, I will bless you with fame, with fortune, with prosperity, with children. And so you can worship uh, Ketu with any Ganesha mantra. And um, uh, one of the most well-known Ganesha mantras is Om Gam Ganapataye Nama. The seed sound Gam is literally the um, Indo-European root for the word to go. In English, when you say go, you're using that same root. And it means exactly that when you, Ganesha means that, that being, that the Lord of the Ganas, but it also means the Lord of making things go. Without that, nothing happens. The beginning, after you die, you are resurrected. It is the force of resurrection. So by chanting Om Gam Ganapata Ye Nama, you are uh, asking for this power to create and start and literally push into existence this spiritual force which is associated with your physical life. So I will put both of those mantras into the, um, into the description here, and you can chant each of them 108 times. Uh, my suggestion would be to separate them out. So what I would do is, um, since today is the day here, uh, the 1st of August, um, you know, when you see this, it's okay. You don't have to, you know, don't worry about, about timing. But I would start 
the day with the uh, Rahu Mantra because that brings you into your, uh, your ambition in life. Om Namah Shivaya Namo Nageshwaraya to clear yourself of the self-delusion of the self, uh, you know, the things that we do to um, sabotage ourselves and asking for Shiva to bring uh, clarity to your vision. And then before you go to bed, you can chant to Ganesha to, to give him the power to help you die to those things that don't serve you on your spiritual path. Um, and you can do each of those 108 times. Uh, if you look on my channel, I believe I have uh, each of those mantras recorded somewhere. If you learn how to search my channel, you'll be able to find both of those mantras. But um, you don't necessarily need to do that. Um, I'll chant them for you so you can stop and go back and watch it. So the Rahu Mantra is Om Namah Shivaya Namo Nageshwaraya. Om Namah Shivaya Namo Nageshwaraya. And the mantra to Ganesha is Om Gang Ganapataye Namah. Om Gang Ganapataye Namah. Now that's it for me. A happy Naga Panchami. And um, I will see you when I see you.